Hi everyone, I'm sitting here drinking in my Born to be a Fabulous Diva cup. I really don't like this cup. I don't know, I don't think of myself as a diva too much. But anyway, I am doing this video in, in a response to Dr. Sean Baker. And I was so surprised, you know, I had originally had a stroke and I had said in one of the stroke videos that I would love to talk to one of the carnivore doctors because maybe they would be able to give me some guidance. And it was so strange, but maybe about a week ago, I did a video about the stroke and there were two commenters in the comment section that said that Dr. Sean Baker had done a video. And you would think that that would make me happy because he has a great channel, very good channel. In fact, when I was a carnivore, I really watched him a lot. I love his videos. He's wonderful if you happen to be a carnivore. But my first response was, oh my gosh, a carnivore has done a video in response to my video. I was scared. And I knew that at maybe two o'clock in the afternoon that Dr. Baker had done this video. And then that night at dinner, I told Alan that, you know, Dr. Baker had apparently done a response video about my stroke. And he said, well, what did he say? And I'm like, I'm afraid. I, I'm afraid to see it. And so I said, okay, if you'll look at it with me, we'll watch it. And over dinner that night, a couple nights ago or whatever, we watched that video. And thank you so much, Dr. Baker. If you see this video, I hope you will. You are very kind and gracious and quite knowledgeable. And we do disagree now in our in our research, I guess. And there'll be one thing, I, this is, I guess, a response to your video. And there will be one thing that I do disagree with you on, but I actually appreciated a couple of the pieces of advice that you gave me. And if there are any other carnivore doctors out there, now this is not in the middle. Here, let me move over. If there are any other carnivore doctors out there who would like to respond to my video, I would like it because I think it's important for us to have a conversation back and forth with the various dietary camps. And I totally respect Dr. Baker and I get where he's coming from because I was there even after I had the stroke. You know, at first I thought maybe I should go low fat, but then I missed my carnivore and I found one carnivore cardiologist that I thought, oh, I can, I, I can use his opinions to justify my doing carnivore. And then I had something else happen. I basically what happened is I had the one stroke on August 15th, got a clot buster, you know, within a few hours, I was back to normal. It was great. Stayed in the hospital for three days though. And the doctors argue back and forth basically about what caused the stroke. And I'll be mentioning that in this video. And what happened to take me from thinking I was going to stay on carnivore to plant-based, I'm now whole food plant-based, is that I went to a neurologist and he said, Beth, I looked at your scan and you didn't just have the one stroke on August 15th. It was up in the right quadrant of my brain there. He said you had four to six other pinpoint strokes is what he called them. He said, they're not even TIAs. They were just little pinpoint strokes. We don't know when they happen, but you can see evidence because you know once you have a stroke, that damage is there. And so he said, it really is more serious than I thought. And you really need to pay attention to what you're doing going forward. And I learned from the American Stroke Association website that if someone has a stroke about 25% of the time, they will have another stroke. And usually it is worse than the first one. So I got really serious, did some research and totally changed my diet because I do believe personally, I do believe that the high cholesterol, high LDL that I had on the day of the stroke, I should not have to be safe from strokes going forward. And again, I want to thank Dr. Baker for his video. And in his response video to me, he was very gracious and very kind. A few months ago, there was a, a person, I guess her name goes by the name of Beth, who runs a, uh, I guess, a relatively large YouTube channel, about 300,000 uh, followers. Uh, it's like a 50 plus kind of health and beauty uh, podcast and she ended up having a stroke and now she was apparently had been doing a carnivore diet for uh, i think a year or so maybe two years at the time of her stroke and she has now you know said that uh, i'm no longer going to do any carnivore diet I'm, I'm transitioning to a more of a plant-based diet to decrease my risk for ischemic stroke first of all absolutely you know i, I sort of feel bad for anybody that has a stroke fortunately she seems to have recovered from it with i think minimal sequelae from that now the question is you know was it caused by being on a carnivore diet now the real answer is we have no real way of knowing you know? dr baker is very right that we really have no idea specifically what caused the stroke but i had four different doctors in the hospital and each of the four doctors had different ideas that she was told that the reason for her stroke 
was due to a small hole in her heart. Most likely it was something called a PFO, a patent foramen ovale. In the way. So you have this little bit of extra blood flow that goes back and forth and it's kind of irregular blood, blood flow, which can sometimes lead to the formation of clots. Now, as I mentioned in the hospital, I had three or four doctors giving their ideas, their theories on why I had the stroke. And these are four of them and they're all kind of different. The first was the PFO, which I'd mentioned in an earlier video in which Dr. Baker responded to. A cardiologist in the hospital who is now my cardiologist, he initially thought I had a PFO or a small hole in my heart, but then maybe four to six weeks after I left the hospital, he scheduled a different angiogram in the hospital to look at it. And when he looked at it, he said, Beth, that PFO hole is so tiny. He said, it's probably almost too tiny for me to put an umbrella closure on, whatever that is. And he said, I really don't think it caused your stroke. And then I went to my neurologist and he said, Beth, because you've had these four to six little tiny strokes in addition to the main stroke, I don't think any hole is too tiny in your heart to have caused a clot to get through. So he said, just to be on the safe side, I would recommend you have that closed. I went back to the cardiologist and he said, well, Beth, I do those closures all day, every day. And he said, I can't use an umbrella closure, but there is a way that I can close that hole. And if your neurologist thinks you need that, then we'll go ahead and do that. And another doctor theory on why I had that stroke was that about a week before the stroke, I'd been on a plane flight that lasted about six hours and they thought a blood clot may have broken off into my leg and traveled up to my brain, up to the right side of my brain. But they did, I don't know what it's called, some sort of scan of both of my legs. And they said, no, no blood clots have broken off. So that theory was off the table. Basically, each of the doctors all had different ideas about why I might have had the stroke. And I realized it doesn't really matter why I had the stroke. And this is one thing I want all of you to know. I am not switching from the carnivore to the plant-based diet, the whole foods plant-based diet, because I totally believe that that caused my stroke. You know, I was very high meat, you know, for about eight years before now, because I did a year of carnivore and then about seven years of paleo and then keto, and I was very high fat in there. But I can't say for sure that my diet caused my stroke. I just want to avoid the chance that I'll have a second stroke going forward. With regard to carnivore diet and risk for atherosclerotic heart disease or cardiovascular disease. Again, I'm not here to say that there's no risk associated. I'm not here to say that it doesn't increase your risk because for all we know, it might. I certainly wouldn't blame her for saying I had an ischemic stroke. One of the risk factors for ischemic stroke is cardiovascular disease and I don't want to have that. So she's trying to minimize her risk by adopting a very low fat, presumably plant-based diet, which will undoubtedly decrease her risk uh, for an ischemic type of event. Now, there's another type of stroke called a hemorrhagic stroke, and we know that plant-based diets increase the risk of hemorrhagic strokes. And So hemorrhagic strokes are secondary when the, the vessels actually bleed into the head. And Dr. Baker is saying that as a vegetarian slash vegan, I have a higher risk for a bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke. And of course that concerned me when I heard him say that in the video. And I did some research about that and I came upon a series of videos by Dr. Michael Greger. Now he is an eminent researcher who has written the books, best-selling books, How Not to Die, How Not to Diet, and also How Not to Age. Well, Dr. Greger was so confused by the higher rate of bleeding strokes mentioned in that study in vegetarian slash vegans that he made a 12 part video series about plant-based eaters and stroke to try to answer that question. But several months later, he realized that all his work on those videos had been in vain. It turns out vegetarians don't appear to have higher stroke risk after all. In response to the epic Oxford results, researchers around the world scrambled to see if the findings were merely a fluke. In 2020, UK Biobank, a massive study following more than 400,000 volunteers, confirmed that vegetarians had lower cardiovascular disease rates and, importantly, no increased incidence of stroke. And two studies from Taiwan found vegetarians had significantly lower risk of stroke. Following tens of thousands of vegetarians for up to 10 years, they only had about half the stroke risk compared to non-vegetarians, including a 64% lower risk specifically of hemorrhagic stroke. By 2021, Harvard researchers had finished and published their analyses of the 200,000 plus participants of the Nurses Health Study, the Nurses Health Study 2, and the Health Professionals Follow-up Study. They too found no increased stroke risk for vegetarians, and indeed a decreased risk of stroke among those eating healthy plant-based diets. 
A meta-analysis putting all the studies together found that, indeed, the Epic Oxford data appeared to be a fluke after all, finding, if anything, a lower risk of stroke in a subgroup analysis. So it looks like vegetarians and vegans really don't have that increased risk for hemorrhagic strokes, which was mentioned in that initial 2019 study, which I was glad about. But then Dr. Baker mentioned two additional risks that he thought I should be aware of. Well, hopefully she will do well on this new dietary venture. Hopefully she won't have issues with uh, frailty and osteopenia and, and some of the things that are so common with plant-based diets. So hopefully she adds lots of protein in there, continues to, or does resistance training if she's not doing that already and continues to do that. Based on the little that I know, that's the input I'd provide. Dr. Baker, I really did appreciate your suggestion there. And I also do resistance training, but I have to admit, I am not as buff as you are. And seeing your great level of physical fitness makes me want to get down in the gym and really work a little harder. I've been kind of laying back on the weights a little bit lately, and you reminded me that I really should not be doing that. And I particularly appreciated your reminders about frailty and making sure I get enough protein. And in fact, after I saw your video, I did start doing research about those issues and counting the grams of protein in what I'm getting each day. And I super appreciated your guidance there. Now, at this point in the video, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And Dr. Baker's wonderful video and his very reasoned response just reminded me again of my thought for the day, which is that Lately in the society, it seems like we're disagreeing more and more and more. And while compromise used to be how we dealt with disagreement, now it just seems it's like you fight your side, they fight their side, fight, 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 fight. I even noticed that in the comment section sometimes between carnivores and whole food plant-based. But let's try not to do that. Let's go back to childhood and kind of remember that simple idea that we should treat others how we'd like to be treated. Because you know, even if we disagree, we don't have to attack each other personally to get our point across. Love and respect are always a great way to go. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.